This is a $200 million sculpture that promised to redefine New York City skyline. It was bold, futuristic, and unlike anything the world had ever seen. It's about people climbing, coming together. It's, it's deliberately meant to be social. How high is this? Pretty high. Are your feet tired from walking all those steps? No. But they're pretty sweaty. From an engineering art, uh, just aspect, it's a, it's a beautiful structure. People loved it, and for a while, it seemed destined to become the new heart of New York City. But then... New tonight, the vessel, the centerpiece at Hudson Yards, is now temporarily closed. Everything changed. From four tragic deaths to protests that shook the city, this once celebrated masterpiece quickly became Manhattan's most expensive failure. But how did this happen? Why did it all go so wrong? What was meant to become a beacon of hope became a symbol of broken dreams. This is a story of ambition, tragedy, and the cost of dreaming too big. This is April 4th, 2019, and New York is ready for the grand opening of America's most expensive project. From CNBC, The Washington Post, and The New York Times, everyone covered it, as this sculpture promising to be America's new Eiffel Tower was finally open to the public. And the credit goes to this man, Stephen Ross, one of America's biggest real estate moguls who envisioned a new future for New York and turned a place that once looked like this into this, a new haven for business. And we started about five years ago, the physical construction. It's complex because it's built over rail tracks. In that period of time, which was really a wasteland, because we're all rail tracks that we built over, today we get the highest rents in New York. But he wasn't just looking to build a new business district. He wanted something extraordinary, something that would elevate the city to a whole new level and make Hudson Yards the center of it all. To do that, he needed someone special, someone who could bring his bold vision to life. That's when he met Thomas Heatherwick. Heatherwick was a visionary designer, known for his ability to turn wild ideas into reality. From the playful rolling bridge in London to the visually stunning Seed Cathedral at the Shanghai Expo, Heatherwick had made a name for himself by blending art and engineering in unexpected ways. But what made him stand out was his ability to think differently. Where others saw architecture as simply functional, Heatherwick saw it as a chance to tell a story, create something that would change how people experience space. That's exactly what Stephen Ross needed. And in turn, Heatherwick understood the idea better than anyone. He realized this wasn't just about creating another building, this was about creating a symbol, something bold, unforgettable, and something that truly reflects America. Most of all, a product that will generate massive public interest and attention for Hudson Yards by building a new icon for the world, the modern day Eiffel Tower, the vessel. While designing the vessel, Heatherwick took inspiration from Indian step wells. If you look closely, you'll see it follows the same pattern, the hundreds of staircases, the trajectory, but flipped upside down. He cleverly took this ancient concept and transformed it into a symbol. Initially, it worked well, especially for a structure like the vessel, which was meant to be interactive centerpiece where people could gather, explore, and connect. But after designing it, the next challenge was translating this bold concept into a real-life structure. The vessel was unlike anything ever attempted before. It was a maze of interconnected staircases, with over 154 flights to be exact, curved and twisted into a form that resembled a futuristic honeycomb. At this time, Heatherwick and his team faced a unique challenge. How do you make something that's not only structurally sound, but also allows it to appear as though it's floating, almost weightless? So the team decided to build a structure to be made from steel, with nearly a thousand individual sections carefully welded and shaped into place. Despite the complexity, the team was confident. Every curve, stair, and angle had been carefully planned. And when the parts started coming together, something incredible began to take shape. And finally, in March 2019, the vessel was completed. The final product was a bold bronze colored structure rising 16 stories into the New York skyline. Its intricate pattern of staircases, over 2,500 individual steps created an amazing visual that seemed to defy gravity, and people loved it. But in an unexpected turn, the vessel, which was meant to be a symbol of hope and ambition, quickly became a symbol of tragedy. Calls tonight for higher barriers on the vessel. 14-year-old boy took his own life in front of his horrified family. Billionaire developer Stephen Ross is reportedly considering permanently closing the tourist hotspot. Authorities were forced to shut it down indefinitely. In just a few months since its opening, four lives had been lost. Peter DeSalvo, a student, Franklin Washington, just 21 years old, Shiv Kulkarni, and a 14-year-old child. These are the people who lost their lives. From once being the masterpiece that invited people in, now it was just a lifeless monument. Hardly anyone could say for sure what was going on with the sculpture, but could the design itself, something about how its shape or how it stood have unintentionally influenced people to make such tragic choices? Or maybe it was something deeper, something beyond the structure itself. 
could have been connected to the social environment of the city. Some speculated the vessel, originally intended as a symbol of progress in the American dream, might have ironically become the perfect backdrop for these ultimate decisions. For some, this towering structure meant to represent success was in stark contrast to the inner struggles they felt. Instead of lifting their spirits, it may have reminded them of everything they couldn't reach, or perhaps what they were fighting against. The dream it was meant to symbolize seemed to turn into a quiet protest against itself. But to understand this better, we need to dive into what really happened. It all started in 2019 when Peter DeSalvo, a 19-year-old university student, tragically jumped from the structure's sixth level. According to reports, it happened around 6 p.m. when he made the decision. Authorities quickly ordered everyone to leave and the mood shifted. Everybody was really quiet walking down the steps. The first incident didn't seem to have any lasting impact on the vessel's reputation. It was assumed to be an isolated event, an anomaly that had nothing to do with the sculpture itself. But just a few months later, on December 22nd, 2020, a similar tragedy occurred. Yoshifid Gurari, a 24-year-old woman from Crown Heights, Brooklyn, took her own life by jumping from the vessel. Before she took her life, Yoshifid had scheduled an Instagram post to be published the following day. In it, she wrote, Hey, this is pretty surreal, isn't it? One might say, uncomfortable, jarring. Just close the app now if you want. I guess if you don't know by now, you should probably sit down. If you're reading this, I'm gone. Either that or somehow somehow incapacitated, so I can't delete the scheduled post. I really hope I'm not, though. I don't care to go into the reasons why I'm gone, but there are certainly more than 13. I scheduled a note to send to my parents, if they choose to share or publish it. I will leave that choice up to them. Even just publishing this may pain them. I don't want to do that. I just want to leave my last mark on this world. All of you have made my life so much more full, brighter, and happier than it would have been without you. Your support, your encouragement, your hugs, your invitations, your smiles, your texts, your tagging me in memes you think I'd find funny. None of you could have done anything or done more to prevent this from happening. You all did your absolute best, and for that, I am eternally grateful. I hope you can find some comfort in knowing I am no longer in pain. I love you. Although Grari had been open about her struggles on Instagram and sought help towards the end of her life, on December 22, 2020, she made the decision that no one saw coming. The city was still trying to recover from the loss when only weeks later, another tragedy happened. Right now at 5.30, Vessel at Hudson Yards is now closed indefinitely after a teenager jumps to his death. As for the 21-year-old man, his identity was kept private. But after this third incident, the vessel was closed indefinitely and authorities launched a thorough investigation into the causes behind the tragedies. It wasn't until May 2021 that the structure reopened with new procedures in place. Now visitors had to be accompanied by at least one other person and after the first hour of the day, all visitors above 5 years old were required to pay $10 for a ticket. These changes were meant to prevent further tragedies. But just two months later, on July 29, 2021, another incident occurred. A 14-year-old boy visiting with his family jumped. According to a security guard on duty that day, the boy had been racing up the stairs with his younger sister, laughing and enjoying themselves. One of his colleagues had even warned them, saying, I know it's fun, but you're not allowed to run in the vessel. But when the boy reached level 8, he jumped. After this fourth incident, the vessel was closed indefinitely once again. The tragedy sparked outrage among community members who called for higher barriers on the walkways and questioned the effectiveness of the structure's safety measures. Stephen Ross, the owner of the related company, said at the time he was considering closing the structure permanently. But what truly struck many was how the company handled the aftermath. According to an article from The Spirit, the parents tried to get in touch with the company, but they were ignored. Conley DeSalo, Peter's mother, left a message on the information line asking to speak to someone about what had happened. I just need to talk to someone about this, she said, but she never received a response. Shilpa Kulkarni, Shiv's mother, reached out through an intermediary with a similar request. Avrami Gurari found Stephen Ross's email address and sent him a message in 2021 stating, My daughter, Yoshifid Gurari, took her life at the vessel on December 22nd of last year. I would like the opportunity to meet with you. But even then, no response came. While there's much debate on how tragedies should be handled, some architectural critics have raised concerns about the design of the vessel itself. Oliver Wainwright, an architectural critic, published an article in 2023 titled Dangerously Misguided, a glaring problem with Thomas Heatherwick's architectural world. Wainwright argues that Heatherwick's belief in visually complex buildings as a remedy for society's problems is flawed. 
criticizes the idea that such buildings can heal our souls, saying it's a convenient and misleading binary. Alan G. Brake had also criticized the vessel, calling it a piece of urban costume jewelry without purpose beyond shallow adornment. Matt Shaw, executive editor at Architects Newspaper, questioned whether the vessel was merely a spectacle designed for visual impact rather than function. Despite the millions invested in the project, the vessel reopened to the public with a strange net surrounding it, aimed at preventing further incidents, but it was no longer the shining centerpiece of the city. The shiny panels reflected a sad truth, one that couldn't be hidden. For Heatherway, the controversy became deeply personal. Art isn't meant to be easy, he said. It's meant to challenge us, and the vessel in its way did just that. It raised difficult questions about the cost of ambition, the balance between beauty and responsibility, and the fine line between public art and private indulgence. As the city moved on, one question kept coming up. What was the true cost of ambition? The vessel, originally designed to be a symbol of progress, became a focal point for controversy not just for a striking design, but for the unintended impact it had on so many lives. Even with the new safety measures in place, the structure now felt like more of a shadow than the bull centerpiece it was supposed to be. The netting and new rules of visitors needing to be with someone else were just small attempts to make things safer, but could they really undo the damage? Could they bring back the original idea of what the vessel was meant to be, or was something permanently changed in how people saw it? For many, the vessel wasn't the shining success it was meant to be anymore. Instead, it became a reminder of what can happen when ambition meets reality, and not always in the way we expect. Critics had warned about focusing too much on style without considering the big picture. Maybe they were right, because despite the changes, the vessel's legacy is now about more than just its design. It's a cautionary tale about the responsibility that comes with creating something so big and so public. Despite all the tragedy and controversy, the vessel is still here, still drawing crowds and still standing tall. Its shiny panels reflect a different kind of light now, a more gloomy one, but that doesn't stop people from coming. In a way, it's become a part of the fabric of the city, something that, for better or for worse, will be remembered in the same breath as the very city it was built to enhance. And while the story of the vessel might have its flaws, it's still a part of New York City's ever-changing landscape, reminding us that even the grandest of ideas can have their pitfalls but even as it became a cautionary tale the vessel didn't go away some its scars only added to its story it stood as a reminder of new york's resilience a city that dreams big stumbles and gets back up again the vessel became a mirror of the city itself bold beautiful and deeply flawed today the vessel's future remains uncertain Hudson Yards faces mounting pressure to rethink its role in the city. Should it continue as a public attraction or should it stand as a solemn monument to those who lost their lives? One thing is clear, the vessel's story is far from over. It's not just a piece of art, it represents how complex city life is today. For some, it's a masterpiece of design. For others, it's a stark reminder of what happens when ambition overshadows humanity. And like New York itself, it continues to evolve, carrying the weight of its history while daring to reach for the sky. Let me know what you think about the vessel. Until next time.